Hello to everyone, my name is Elwin Waman and today I will present Quechua Base when Quechua meets Wikibase. The outline of my presentation will start with the introduction uh, where I will state my motivation and the problem that I want to solve. Then I will present the approach where or how are we tackling this problem. Then in the third I will show the results, basically the Quechua base and its feasibility into the te uh, into the community and also technologically wise. And finally, I will present some use cases where the Quechua base can be used. Well, starting with the introduction, I was why we are doing this, basically. And the point is that the knowledge in general in our lives can be studied from different points of view. And also, when it's well spread, can produce positive or negative results, which will affect basically the development of nations. And the two pictures at the bottom can show two examples of uh, how it's the knowledge is spread. In the left side, you can see the uh, Kicho community trying to preserve the mountains with the snow because we consider them as gods or guardians in some cases. Uh, in the middle image you can see a mountain that was uh, basically consumed because it was considered a, a means of resource like a mine of gold or <coughs> other kind of mineral. So which knowledge is well spread? Basically if you see a mountain you can see a uh, resource or you can see a guardian so this kind of knowledge is well spread in the world which one of those is well spread in your uh, nation or in your country then <coughs> why we are doing this because the Kichu language is an endangered language and never uh, so however it is still has 10 million speakers around the world these speakers are mainly concentrated in the six countries in South America. However, there are only few resources available for the Quechua community and they are not present as linguistic linked open data because there is no consensus between the, the different Quechua languages in South America or in the world. So in the map uh, in the right side you can see the distribution of the Quechua communities in South America. So what is the problem? The problem is that the new generation of uh, Quechua families are not speaking Quechua anymore. So basically my generation is probably one of uh, the last generations that can speak and understand Quechua. And technologically speaking, las technologies are not developed for Quechua communities. Basically everybody in the world assumes that the, in South America we speak Spanish and which is enough for us. But this is not true. We, uh, in our identity or our, in our uh, heritage, cultural heritage, we uh, speak Quechua. And everybody should know that we first speak a native language, which is Quechua, Aymara, Shipibo, or on one of the uh, 48 languages in, in Peru, for example. Then how we are trying to solve this? Um, so basically we are trying to propose an approach that contains uh, of four steps steps to the first one is the identification of adequate sources for example in when we talk about data we are collecting corpuses dictionaries bilingual texts and everything that uh, can uh, be preserved then where we collect this we have to choose a database or a knowledge base where we can store this so basically we were thinking at the first uh, thought a Wikibase, a Wikidata, etc., or Wikipedia. But we wanted something that can be uh, like a, can can make use of the semantic technologies because this is uh, very useful if you want to develop like uh, personal assistants or go a little bit further uh, and not only storing the data but making use uh, making of use of them. And also we want something that it's community driven because we don't want to store the knowledge and protect them and secure them and, and we want the knowledge uh, built by the community and exploited by the community 
and we want something that is open source as well. So that's why we use the wiki base. In the second step, we are processing and setting up the, the knowledge base. So in the database, we set up the Kichwa base and programming a bot to ingest the data. Regarding the data, we have to first uh, identify the source. We identify the source and then we normalize the data. We clean the data and we refine it. Basically, we have the Kichwa base set it up and a bot that can ingest the data and also can clean the data and refine the data. Then we model and populate the, the model we described. Basically, we describe, for example, lexical entries, lexical forms, and so on. But also, it's, uh, it can be integrated knowledge like uh, biographies, persons, uh, locations, places, and so on. And then we populate them. So ingesting lexemas, uh, for that we develop um, a wiki, well, basically we use the wiki wiki base integrator, where it's a Python bot to integrate or ingest data into the Kichwa base. So you can see in the image in the, in the bottom, uh, the ingesting of the 3rd of June, and also some uh, command lines in the left, uh, right side at the top. Then on the exploitation, it's uh, very simple afterwards because you can access the Kichwa base through the link kichwa.wikibase.cloud and you can make Sparkle queries and also you can exploit uh, in different in different uh, use cases like language learning resources, dialogue system or NLP tasks. So some of the results is the Kichwa base and we can you can access Kichwa base through your desktop or mobile through the link kichwa.wikibase.cloud and currently there are around uh, 25,000 uh, items ingested into the Kichwa base uh, which so far contains uh, linguistic data like a substantive, verb chance, diverse, adjective and so on but in the f it's, uh, it's proposed to ingest also data of uh, like uh, biographies, places, restaurants of the Quechua towns in Peru. So, for example, here there is an, uh, some queries that can show lexemes that have multilingual sense descriptions. For example, we have a lexeme here, uh, lexeme 106, where the lemma is Ashka, which also have sense glosses in different languages, like a German, Spanish, English, and so on. There is an example of how, how this lemma is used in the context in some um, phrases and also where this example has been found, basically. For that, we double up a board and we ingest the data according to that. Then, regarding the feasibility of the Kichwa base, we talk with the community, but uh, regarding the technological side, we basically exploit the, the features of Wikibase. So they provide uh, means to uh, model the schema, to also populate the, the schemas, and also the uh, Wikibase integrates can be, can integrate the uh, open refine to clean or interlink uh, the data. And in the social and organizational wise, we talk with the Kichwa community, and we thought that uh, they can build a collaborative mentality that where Quechua speakers and users are better off if they participate and contribute because if they, if we have a uh, knowledge base in the Quechua language, we can exploit them as cor so if it's correct, we can also get correct results. So this is uh, very good for the community because we, we can work together on this. Some uh, use cases that I can mention uh, that can you make use of the Kichwa base are, for example, Google can index the Kichwa base and present in the results some Kichwa uh, pages or Kichwa results, or some questions. And also, there are some. Uh, I, I, I propose that uh, once it's indexed, it can also be used by search engines, like uh, providing knowledge panels with uh, content that it summarizes, like uh, in this case Peru in the right side, a simple info box that contains uh, important information about uh, places in this case. Then also Kichwa Base can be used to develop uh, personal assistance and there's an example in the YouTube video uh, here 
that uh, you can access through the link in the presentation. Also, there are some chatbots that can be developed uh, in Quechua if you uh, uh, feed uh, this chatbot with uh, a Quechua language knowledge graph or knowledge base. So for validating this uh, Kicho base, we also talk with the community and for that we all organized uh, several events and I went where I traveled to Peru and I organized several workshops with the students, uh, teachers and the community. And they thought that uh, at the first uh, view that the Kicho base is perfect for them. However, they need uh, uh, technical skills uh, for using them. So basically they can provide some insights regarding the uh, uh, for example recording the voices for the uh, for the lemmas or for the items that is contained in the Kichu base also on validating the correctness of the examples on the Kichu base and also they uh, wanted to populate the Kichu base by providing for example a uh, description of places um, of stores of uh, paths or hiking trips and so on so they they are they want to do this and they think that the kitchen base is a perfect place for doing it because it's something that we are developing together and they feel like you are doing together in this path and of course the the final result can be integrated into the several wikimedia uh, projects like uh, Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons uh, and so on. So this is a collaborative part but a first step that we want to do in the Ketchup community is to, to build this and prove that it's it's good enough. And of course once we have the community we can uh, keep on collaborating with um, um, Wikipedia and the Wikimedia Commons and so on, all the Wikimedia projects. Then also uh, I want to thank to all the collaborators that um, ma made this uh, talk possible and also this this event. And yes, uh, I want to say and finalize saying that the kitchen communities are alive. We are in the mountains in the Andes of Peru, but also we are around the world. Thanks for your attention.